Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Aquarius, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the last two weeks of November. I hope you are. I'm using the Lost Forest title for you today. Here it is. Now if you haven't seen these readings before, I structured them slightly differently to the main monthly readings in so much as we are looking for the lesson. I believe that there is wisdom or a lesson contained within every experience and interaction that we have if we are open to seeing it. And far too often we are not because we get bogged down with the... The stuff that's right in front of us, you know, the uh, 3D agitations. And so this is, if you will, um, an exercise in perspective. It's about drawing back and seeing what lesson is being taught to us here by the universe, by our higher selves, you know, whatever it is. <coughs> Excuse me. So to that end, what we're going to do is pull three cards for your current energy, an energetic snapshot. See where you are right now. And from there, we will pull three cards and work out why it is that you are in this energy in the first place. I, I find, I have found over the years, that it helps me not only gain perspective, but, but navigate through the challenging stuff a little more readily. If I can see what's on the other side of it, you know, if I can see the point of it. And we'll close out with three cards of advice. So, I hope that that makes sense. I'm sure that it uh, will by the end of the reading. Let's get three cards for Aquarius, please. Three cards for Aquarius, please. Come on. Three cards for Aquarius. There's a lot being said here, but I'm not going to take the flippers. I'm going to take the ones that have jumped. So what do we have here? We have the Eight of Pentacles. Good card. Very good card. Tell me about that. We have Two of Swords, one more card for Aquarius please, thank you. We have the Knight of Swords, or the Knight of Skies as it is in this deck. We have the Strength card at the bottom, that's your opposite in the Zodiac, it's the card of Leo and I love it in this deck. Window. <clears throat> Because what we've got is a woman on a rock there, staring down cosmological forces, right? There is something big going on here. The, the strength card for me speaks about spiritual growth. And it seems that we've got some of that going on here for you. Dark skies is what I'm saying here with this card. It's almost like you can feel a rumble. You know that there is something going on. There is something coming for you, Aquarius. And what I sense is a, a willingness to face it, but at this point, uh, not really knowing how how this is supposed to happen, right? We've got the Eight of Pentacles, which is an extremely good card. It talks about working at something until you achieve a level of mastery. But what I'm struck with here in this lost forest, I don't know if you can see that, we've got this kind of fox-like creature here. It actually looks like um, a nine tails from Pokemon. It's kind of cool, right? It's peering around the tree, but we have the tail of a second one, right? Just there, if you can see it, right? <clears throat> And there's a sense of going round and round the tree. There's a sense of putting in an awful lot of effort. And pentacles, for me, do indicate effort. <clears throat> but not necessarily catching up with what it is that you are putting in the effort for at this point. It's just like, I know I've got to put some effort in somewhere. I know I've got to work at something somewhere. But I'm not entirely sure where that place is. Now, the two of skies, as it is in this deck, or the two of swords, features, you know, two very hard places with trees that are growing on the side of it, reaching out to each other. Again, we have this notion of like trying to connect with something that is just a little bit elusive at this point. And when you put these two together, what we've got is putting in effort, but not quite knowing if it's the right effort, not quite knowing what you're putting it in for, you know. Um, <clears throat> I've always found Aquarians to be very logical, very rational. But since I started this channel, I've seen this kind of other side of Aquarians that isn't often spoken about, but seems to be you know, somewhat of an open secret in that you have this kind of galactic other side to yourselves. I use the word galactic because that was what somebody put in the comments once. Galactic Aquarians. There's a sense 
here that something is coming, that there is trouble ahead. But I don't see it happening. No. I don't get the sense of it affecting you negatively. More this is a sense of needing to prepare, wanting to prepare in, in whatever way that you are choosing to do so, whatever situation this refers to. I mean, this could be trouble at work, you know, just kind of got an instinct that something's going a bit funny somewhere. It could be in a relationship, although I don't really feel like it is. So it could be something altogether broader than that. But whatever it is, there's a sense that, that you are turning to face it and there is no fear whatsoever. The only, the only thing that's causing you a bit of concern at the moment is, am I preparing in the right way? Am I doing the right thing here? Um, should I be putting my energy somewhere else? What is it that I'm trying to, to get ready to face? Am I doing it in the right way? Yeah? I'm going to pull another card for this Two of Swords. I'm going to pull this John Bauer deck up here. Tell me about the Two of Swords, please. And we've got two cards for the Two of Swords. We have the Hermit. <clears throat> and we have the Page of Pentacles. And interestingly, they're facing away from each other. They're both Earth energy. The Hermit is Virgo. The Page of Pentacles, I don't think, has a, has a correspondence. But we've got the Seven of Pentacles there. The Seven of Pentacles talks about a situation that you find yourself in that is, in a lot of ways, suboptimal, right? We, on this card, we've got a princess who is looking as if she's about to enter this dark wood. Right. <clears throat> Again, feeding this sense of foreboding. Now... I'm assuming if you're still sat with me here, Aquarius, you know exactly what this is. Um, but the interesting thing is, I don't think that it necessarily actually has a form at this point. There's not one thing you go, I know that this is coming and so I'm preparing for it. More, it seems like this rather amorphous feeling that you can't quite put your finger on. But it's like you're being activated by it. There's something that you need to do. The fact that these two are facing away from each other is quite interesting because it says to me this the the hermit card this virgo card of looking within says that if you really really sat with it you would be able to identify exactly what it is but at this point it's kind of eluding you a little bit but it's like <clears throat> looking within for the answers but something needing to change on the outside in terms of how you, where you put your effort. A different direction to put your effort into than it has, than you have had, rather, up until this point. Extraordinary reading. Right, let's have a look and see why you are in this energy. I mean, I feel like we've probably nailed that already, but why is Aquarius in this energy? Whoa. <clears throat> wow. That's extraordinary. <laughs> so at the bottom of the deck, we have got the Ten of Swords, or the Ten of Skies, as it is in this case. And it is a literal asteroid impact, right, onto the planet. But here's where it gets interesting, because you've got the Nine of Swords as the first card that came out here, right? A, a card that speaks of concern. But we've got the Ten of Cups and we've got the Nine of Pentacles following after. Now we've got two cards number 10 and two cards number 9. But as to why it is that you are in this energy at the moment, Nine of Swords, you're right. Like th This for me is validation that you are correct. There is something coming. And whatever a sense of foreboding that you ha may have about it, it is well placed and preparations in a, whatever way you feel like you should be preparing are justified because whatever this is it's really quite big it has the capacity to to unsettle things a lot but the beauty of of the pips cards which is the aces to the tens is that they indicate a cycle of swords right so what we've got here is a crescendo being reached but from that ten of swords where we go to is the Ace of Swords, right? <clears throat> so we have concern about an issue. We have that issue actually hitting. And then from there, because this indicates completion, where we go is the Ace of Swords. 
And the Ace of Swords is, sometimes it's a new way of seeing the world. Other times it's it's problem solving. It's, it's, it's actually quite creative because it's about putting things together that perhaps other people don't see. It's certainly getting a sense of insight. Now, the reason why I think that this is actually really, really good for you is that you're getting a head notice. You're, you're, you're getting prior warning of whatever this is. But well, we've got this Ten of Cups and this Nine of Pentacles here. There's a sense that because of the preparations that you put in, there is a way in which, I don't want to say benefit because I don't think it's that kind of situation, but there is a way for you to thrive afterwards. Now, you know, if you wanted to be really cold about it, you could say that there was a way for you to capitalise on it, but that, again, doesn't sit nicely with me in the same way that the word benefit doesn't. <clears throat> but what we've got here is the Ten of Cups. We've got an emotional situation that involves more than just you. So this, it's basically just more than you. So this can be two people, but we would expect to see the Two of Cups with that. It could be three people, but we'd expect to see the Three of Cups. More often, it is a wider community, whether that is your family, your friendship group, your work colleagues, humanity in general, you know, whatever it is. <clears throat> and it's, it's a really good card. It's a very, very good card. And it's here with the Nine of Pentacles. Now, the Nine of Pentacles is about excellent resource management, right? It, all the nines speak about the individual to me. Now, you've already had the Eight of Pentacles. We've already got you putting in that work. Here is a situation where you are sitting pretty. All of your resources have gone in the right direction and you are well catered for. More importantly to you, and I feel like it's more important to you, because of your prior preparation, those people that you care about are also in a state of um, <coughs> emotional comfort. That's the way I'm going to put it, emotional comfort, because, because what we've got here are, are whales swimming around in the sea, and we've got a, an adult, we've got a couple of, couple of calves here, and there's another adult in the, in the background here, but they're all swimming around in the water. Right? There's no sense of anybody being discombobulated here or, or, you know, them sitting in a Nine of Swords kind of situation. Rather, the Nine of Swords is, is that almost premonition kind of level insight into what is coming, which then, having prepared for, having put the energy into, keeps them safe, keeps them and it's those people that you're worrying about, it's not you, interestingly, keeps them being able to swim about in their emotions, unconcerned about what is going on. What an extraordinary reading, Aquarius, holy crap. <clears throat> in terms of a lesson, it's about trusting your instincts. It's about trusting the messages that are coming through to you. It's about trusting your gut, you know, whatever your gut is, is rumbling about at the moment it's correct is what this reading is saying to me give me a part of advice please for Aquarius part of advice for Aquarius there we go right we have down here the Queen of Cups we have the Four of Wands and we have the Knight of Pentacles yeah <clears throat> the Queen of Cups is a card of receptivity, right? Queens are receptive, water is receptive. The Queen of Cups is the most receptive card in the tarot, certainly within the court hierarchy, but probably in the tarot, full stop. It is about accepting that which is coming towards you with grace, with compassion, with forgiveness, with a very stable emotional energy. It's not about stopping what is happening. It's about making your peace with it and accepting it as it comes in, right? And your emotional stability about this situation is critically important for those around you that you are looking to take care of at this point. But we also have the Four of Wands and the Knight of Earth, or Four of Fire and the Knight of Earth, which is the Four of Wands and the Knight of Pentacles here. The Four of Wands is a card for me of home, not necessarily your four walls, but those people who engender within you a sense of home, right? We're talking about the people, we're talking about the, the circumstances and the situations where these people come in, right? 
that's the card of home that I'm talking about, right? So imagine you just have some brilliant news. Like, who are the three or four people that you will call straight away to tell about this brilliant news? Who do you know will celebrate with you and be joyous with you? That's what's indicated here by this four of, four of Wands. But the other thing that it means, the other thing that it talks about is the creation of a new foundation, right? It is accepting that a new paradigm is coming in. And although you are a fixed sign, there is a level of fluidity that is required until the dust settles, right? You will build something new and as a fixed sign, I think that's something that we all do very, very well is build things. You know, we like our little corner of the universe. We like to have a good foundation. But the foundation that you've had up until this point is shifting, it's changing, it's it's fluid. The situation is fluid. <laughs> and possibly a little overwhelming initially. You know, I'm looking at this card here, we've got this big mountain and we've got this huge sun behind it, enormous sun. And if you were to look at that, you know, if you were to come out of your house and see this scene, we've got a mountain that indicates challenges and we've got this huge sun, which is, although it is, you know, a life-giving celestial body for us, frankly, if it was that close, we'd all be incinerated to shit, right? Like that. But look how the Queen of Cups has got a back to it. It's almost like what is going on outside of you? There's so much that you can do to prepare and that's important. But what you can do emotionally to prepare is almost more important, right? What's going to happen is going to happen. You cannot prevent it. However, you've kind of got the jump on the situation because you can prepare around it. You can prepare for the establishment of this new, new uh, foundation for you and then move beyond it right we've got the knight of pentacles there virgo energy again but it takes about it talks about taking those small steps right <clears throat> it is about knowing what is important and holding that aloft there's there's a sense here that that quite a lot of what you have been holding on to will be swept away in some way. But knowing in advance that it's going to happen and trusting and accepting the, it for what it is, which is a clarifying. And I mean a clarifying as in, you know, like clarifying water. It's a purifying. It's taking away that which doesn't need to be in your life obviously, and it's replacing it with the opportunity to build something new. And this is what it is for you here. Absolutely intriguing reading, Aquarius, really intriguing. I'm curious to know what it's about. But the emotions are important. Your emotions are important. And everybody else will be okay if you're on that stable point. So I really hope that this helped. I'm going to leave it there. Know that I love you all very, very much and I will see you soon.